A sweet and intelligent lady named Ashley Albright was fortunate since childhood. Ashley could not relate to people complaining life is hard because her journey was a smooth path. Luck seems to be with her anytime and wherever she goes. It was a rainy morning as she headed outside for work. Oscar was there holding an umbrella, doubting if she could make it on time to the office. Suddenly, the dark clouds were gone and the sun appeared. Not only that, a taxi also stopped in front of the building. Oscar was amused by how the weather changed in a snap. Ashley assumed it, because she was born lucky in life. Oscar escorted the lady to the cab, and another luck took place, she discovered a dollar in her shoe. On the way, it seems she oriented the traffic lights to be green when passing by. Ashley expects to be early at the office, so she bought her colleague's favorite muffin. If there was a lucky girl in New York, the unlucky man also existed. He is Jake Harden, a dedicated manager of the British band McFly. When Ashley's cab passed by him, the vehicle splashed water on his coat. Jake was roaming around in the city to meet the famous record label owner, Damon Phillips. He plans to give their band's demo CD, hoping to be discovered. Jake finally saw him nearby, taking his dog for a walk. Terrified, he practiced his talk before approaching him. Damon was walking farther, so he ran. As he took a step, his shoe got wet in the streets. He was delighted to see a penny but ripped his pants after. His unlucky day was only starting, and there was yet to come. Meanwhile, Ashley arrived at the office. She works at Braddon & Co Public Relations, and as a woman, she was glad to find a mirror to check herself, before entering the building. Inside, the elevator was full, but Ashley was lucky to find another with no one inside. Apart from that, she also met David Pennington the owner of the Boston Celtics. At the park, Damon's dog pooped. He had no intention of picking it up, but an officer saw him. Having no paper, Damon took out a bill and picked up the poop with it. He is rich, so he never cared to dump the dirty money after. Jake, who happened to pass by the trash bin, saw it. It was crumpled, and he didn't see the poop. Jake kept the bill without hesitation. He pulled out his hands from the pocket and found the money sticking to his hands. It was at that moment, Jake realized, it was a dog waste. Disgusted, he ran to the water nearby to wash his hands. However, it took him so long, and Damon was almost out of sight. In a rush, Jake accidentally bumped into a lady. His trouser also fell off, after ripping them earlier. The jogger thought he was a pervert, so she screamed for help and caught the officer's attention. Jake ran as fast as possible to escape the authorities and follow Damon. In the end, the officer caught him, so he threw the CD towards Mr. Phillips. However, it landed on the road, and Damon's car crushed it. Jake surrendered, because he has got used to being arrested countless times. It was either due to being unlucky or wrongly accused. He requested to be at the 36th precinct, because the prisoners were friendly. Meanwhile, at Braddon & Co., David's son got interested in Ashley and invited her out. The lady did not refuse since he was also cute. Ashley greeted Maggie and Dana, her best friends, and shared her encounter with a wealthy and attractive guy. Dana reminded Ashley about the company's meeting with Phillips. Ashley realized it would be in minutes, and she was tasked to take down notes. She dashed to the conference room, but no one was there. Little did she know her boss, Peggy Braddon, and the team got stuck in the elevator due to overcrowding. Shortly after, Phillips arrived. The man was furious because only Ashley was there. Phillips boasted he earns a huge amount of money every minute, and he hates wasting time. Ashley assured him Peggy would arrive soon. At the elevator, Peggy and her team were desperate to escape, but they failed. Minutes passed by, but no one came. Ashley pretended that her boss had sent the proposal, and that she was ready to present at any time. The man didn't listen and left the room. Ashley pleaded and promised he would earn more if he only allowed her to present. Hearing that, Phillips became interested. Meanwhile, Jake was released from prison and headed outside to search for Phillips. He was unlucky again because it rained hard. Going back to the office, Peggy finally escaped being trapped and headed to the conference room. She apologized to Damon for making him wait. Peggy promised the presentation would start soon, after her secretary got the files. Damon doesn't listen and attempts to leave the place. He said Ashley had already pitched the entire PR strategy, and he liked it, especially the party. Ashley was scared of her boss's reaction, but not until Peggy approved the masquerade bash she pitched. She also assigned her to be in charge, and gave her an office of her own and the company's credit card. Ms. Barden also allowed Ashley to call her Peggy. After several unfortunate encounters, Jake decided to visit his stress reliever cousin, Katie. The little girl stays with her grandma, Martha. The older woman works despite her age, and Jake usually watches Katie on her shift. The little girl was delighted to know Jake brought burgers. It's her all-time favorite snack, so Jake doesn't forget to bring one whenever he visits. Katie showed him what the fourth grader boys did to her at school. They glued a toy on her face, and she had difficulties removing it. Jake only laughed, telling her she was still lucky compared to him earlier. In the end, Jake helped her pull it smoothly. Meanwhile, the girls stayed at Ashley's place to try on outfits for the masquerade bash. They also talked about Ashley's date with the rich and attractive David. Dana suggested they should find the dragon lady, Peggy, a date too, so she won't mind them getting wild at the party. Shortly after, someone knocked on the door, and it was Antonio, Ashley's neighbor. The man took her dry-clean dress since it was delivered when she was out. 
Ashley thanked him and complimented on his outfit. The man looked attractive in the suit, so she wondered where he was heading. Antonio boasted he would be out on a date, and it's a different girl this time. Hearing that, Ashley thought he would be a perfect match for Peggy. Before Antonio agreed, he asked if her boss was attractive. Ashley said she was, so the man got interested. It was also not a problem since he was free on that day. The girls were relieved after finding a date for the dragon lady. Ashley looked at the dress, and it was only then she realized, it was not hers. Sarah Parker owns the dress, who lives in another unit. It was also her size, so she plans to use it, and return it to Sarah afterward. Another day for Jake means, another day to be miserable. Soon after he left the apartment, a bird pooped in his jacket. Across is the bowling alley where he works, he was almost hit by a car. The McFly band he manages, performs at the bar in the bowling club. Jake found them practicing for a performance. The boy group saw him, and wondered if he already gave their demo CD to Phillips. It has been a week already, but Jake never gave them updates. Jake reasoned out he had a schedule conflict with the record label owner, but assured them they were right to trust him. He excused himself because he needed to clean the comfort room, his side hustle. On the same night was Ashley and David's date. They rode on a helicopter where the man complimented Ashley's dress. At Rock and Bull, Jake and the McFly are about to impress two important people in the music industry. If they like their performance, there is a higher chance for the band to be popular. Other bar guests were also seated, so the band started to perform. Unfortunately, Jake ruined the most important night of his group. The guests were turned off and left the place. Because of the incident, the band never paid Jake and fired him as their manager. They planned to return home, hopeless to have a lucky break in New York. Jake stopped them and asked for another week of the contract extension. He promised to give their demo CD to Phillips by then. If he fails to do so, the band can leave him with no hard feelings. The band's vocalist agreed, as well as the members. Jake was extremely happy for the chance, and this time, he would do everything to meet Phillips. The next day, Ashley was dining with her friends in an Asian restaurant, where she shared how her date with David went. He was a gentleman, and they kissed. David also invited her for another date, which thrilled Maggie and Dana. The girls felt jealous of her being lucky in life. Back in high school, they cannot forget how she was nominated as prom queen in another school. Ashley doesn't believe she was lucky, so the girls tested it out. They bought a lottery ticket, and voila, Ashley won. She has lucky genes indeed, but was in denial. Ashley and Dana headed to the masquerade party venue to meet Ms. Braddon. Ashley started presenting her plan of turning the venue into a carnival-like atmosphere. The party expects VIPs, celebrities, and the record industry, so she wants to provide them with all the best. They can wear anything, but they must have masks on. The place will have a DJ, circus performers, and fortune tellers. There will be a stage, dance floor, and alcoves with couches and drapes for people who want privacy. Ashley wants the guests to feel like anything can happen in the grand party. The masquerade bash finally came, and Ashley looked stunning in her baby pink dress. She assured Peggy the hired dancers were doing great, and Phillips will arrive soon. Ashley saw Antonio, and was grateful he came. She immediately pointed to Peggy, who was standing near the fortune teller. Antonio was interested at first glance and approached her. Meanwhile, Jake pleaded to go inside the masquerade party, after learning Phillips will be there. However, security took him out of the event. Jake passed by the back door and found an organizer waiting for a dancer. He thought Jake was the Ronald he was expecting, so he let him in. The man hurriedly went upstairs to change clothes. At the party, the fortune teller, Madame Z, predicts Antonio and Peggy are meant to be lovers. Ashley was happy to see them having a great time. Antonio thanked the lady for setting them on a blind date. It was only then that Peggy found out Ashley brought the adorable man for her. Madame Z offered Ashley her service, however, the lady refused. She's not into fortune telling because she was lucky since childhood. The fortune teller agrees she has been blessed all her life, not until she picked the upside down wheel of fortune card. Ashley had goosebumps when the woman warned her to be careful, because the wheel would be spinning back. The lady bid goodbye before she could hear a worse prediction about her. She was not wrong, Madame Z freaked out after picking another card. Phillips went upstage and thanked the guests for always supporting his record releases and fundraisings. The crowd cheered as Phillips officially announced the commencement of the party. Dancers performed on stage, including Jake. He had no idea of the choreography but managed to do his role. While entertaining the guests, Jake's eyes were fixed on Phillips. He followed him, but someone caught his attention. It was Ashley. Even with her mask on, she was glowing in Jake's eyes. The man invited her to dance, and since he was cute, Ashley agreed on the spot. Maggie and Dana were also supportive, and pushed her to dance with him. After minutes of dancing, the two clicked and became comfortable. The atmosphere turned romantic, and Ashley was tempted to kiss him. Jake also fell in love with her, so he liked it. Madame Z saw them and pulled a card. It was telling her that fate brought them together. Ashley pulled away, and apologized for the kiss. Jake was okay with it and said she had nothing to be sorry about. Phillips finally went to the crowd, so Jake grabbed the opportunity to approach him. He asked permission to leave and told Ashley to stay, and wait for his return. Ashley was confused about why he was going soon, 
when they had a great time together. Regardless, she stayed because he promised to return. Maggie came and asked the lady who the guy was. She laughed because Ashley didn't know his name but kissed him. Suddenly, Ashley's shoe heels collapsed. She sat down to check it, but her dress was ripped off. Good thing Maggie was there to cover her up. For the first time, Ashley was unlucky. Outside, Mr. Phillips stood near the streets to talk to someone. Jake removed his mask to introduce himself formally. However, the man was too busy to give a minute of his attention. Suddenly, a reckless truck driver almost hit a cab. Good thing the vehicle avoided the impact. Unfortunately, the taxi headed in Mr. Phillips' direction, so Jake pushed him away. Unable to save himself, Jake rolled to the windshield and fell to the road after. The taxi driver checked on him and requested the passersby to call an ambulance. Jake refused and said he was completely fine. He even stood up and went to Mr. Phillips to check his condition. Damon was impressed by how the man's body was composed, despite the impact. He also calls Jake Spider-Man because he looked cool earlier while saving him. Mr. Phillips thinks saying thank you would not be enough, so he asked other ways how he can repay his kindness. Jake thought of the demo CD and gave it to the man. He introduced McFly as the hottest band in the city and pleaded with him to lend his ears and listen to their album. Jake was unfinished explaining yet when Phillips agreed. He accepted the CD and told him to bring the band to his office because he was willing to listen. The famous guy returned to the venue, telling everyone how the brave lad had saved him. With everything that happened, Jake couldn't believe his long-time wish was granted, and he got lucky for the first time. Going back to Ashley, she was choking, and Maggie was panicking already. Dana came to the rescue and performed the Heimlich maneuver. After three attempts, she was able to remove the olive that was stuck in her throat. Ashley was not fully recovered when she saw Peggy and Antonio captured by the authorities. Peggy also pointed at her, and she had no idea about it. The cops arrested her, and Ashley thought it was about Sarah's dress. She promised to return it soon, but the police never listened. The three being captured in the middle of a celebration caught everyone's attention. The media, who were interviewing Phillips, recorded the moment. Peggy was extremely embarrassed, while Ashley explained her side about the dress issue. It was only when Ashley had a mugshot that she discovered Antonio was an escort. Since Peggy was with him during the arrest, she was also involved. Peggy, on the other hand, pointed to Ashley because she was the one who set them up on a blind date. Apart from that, Peggy is about to lose her biggest client, Mr. Phillips, because of the incident. It was also her first time being humiliated, and she blamed it all on Ashley. The precinct was hell. A prisoner was acting authoritative among everybody, and she kept claiming the seat as her territory. Shortly after, Ms. Braddon was released on bail leaving Ashley alone in the cell. Ashley was also fired, after the embarrassment she caused her boss. The woman prisoner approached her again. Ashley was irritated, and complained about why she kept mentioning every corner of the cell as hers. Before the lady could finish talking, a punch landed on her face. The McFly finally performs in front of Mr. Phillips. Jake in the recording studio couldn't hide his excitement. However, the band only sang the song's second line, and Mr. Phillips looked uninterested. He left the room, so Jake followed to request another chance. The man apologized for not meeting his expectation. Mr. Phillips replied that a band that performs well would eventually sell itself. He described the McFly as an idealist and purist, and he likes them. Mr. Phillips promised to send the copies to radio stations and see what they think about it. He wondered why Jake didn't believe him when he had spent eight minutes hearing the band. Jake couldn't believe Phillips had signed their band. He also instructed his secretary, Tiffany, to give them advance pay and provide him with a penthouse. The secretary congratulated the man for passing the standards of her boss. On a similar day, the New York City Police Department released Ashley. Her unlucky day officially starts. She saw cabs passing by, so she ran to stop them. The vehicles splashed water on her, and it rained hard after. Ashley went home, desperate to take a bubble bath after days in prison. Her makeup was also messed up, and she looked dirty after being soaked in the rain. The elevator opened, and Ashley found officers in the hallway. She greeted them as she walked to her unit. She freaked out, seeing her room flooded and the wall hammered. The chief officer informed the lady and promised to take care of everything. Despite the situation, Ashley asked if she could have a minute to change clothes inside. Only then did she know her unit was also infested with molds, and she could not enter the premises. Ashley was worried about the furniture. The officer said they would burn everything before it got contaminated. They managed to save some of her things and place them in a box, but those were only a few of the valuable things she owned. Ashley headed to the elevator and tried to be grateful for everything she has in the meantime. Suddenly, the bottom of the box collapsed, and all her things fell. If Ashley was experiencing a series of misfortune, it was the opposite for Jake. He couldn't breathe out of amusement at the apartment that Tiffany showed him. It has a satellite TV, movie theater, and it looks spacious for a single person to stay. Jake felt awkward when the secretary flirted with him. She also invites him out for a date and keeps calling him Spider-Man. Ashley stayed at Maggie and Dana's place. She has no money and an apartment to stay in, but she doesn't want her parents to know. The Dragon Lady Peggy also made sure she got a bad reputation to other firms, making it difficult to land a job. 
As of the moment, she will sleep on the couch and promises the girls she won't cause trouble. Ashley's hair was wet after a bath, so she blow dried it. In the bathroom, the lady saw a black cat, but was relieved it was Maggie's pet. While drying her hair, the lady noticed a pimple on her face. She rattled, not knowing the blower vacuumed her hair. The device won't stop functioning, so she hits it into the mirror. Dana heard a broken glass sound, so she asked Ashley if she was fine. The lady assured her everything was going well and she can handle it. Just after saying that, the blower exploded. She dropped it in the tub and filled it with water forgetting to unplug the device. The entire apartment building lost electricity because of her. Neighbors got furious and complained about the incident. Dana and Maggie checked on her. Ashley said she only broke a mirror, but the girls saw the blower still plugged and soaked in the tub. Ashley doesn't know what to do, because it seems like after the masquerade ball, everything she touches turns to crap. She also experienced a series of misfortune. When people used to admire her for being lucky, Dana calmed her down because fate was only playing with her. The lady believes that the wheel keeps spinning, and the time comes that she will be on top again. Hearing that, Ashley had flashbacks. The fortune teller picked a spinning wheel card back then, and bad luck seems to follow her. Ashley had a realization and borrowed clothes because she will be going somewhere. In the night, Ashley visited Madame Z, who was only done closing her shop. Ashley was furious and knocked on the door with anger. The fortune teller approached her and wondered why she was mad. Ashley confronted the woman for ruining her perfect life. She used to be lucky before they met, but after the party, she encountered a series of misfortune. Ashley demanded to return her luck as soon as possible. Madame Z was not guilty of her accusations because she warned her but never listened. The fortune teller instructed her to remember what happened that night. Aside from almost choking, ripping off her dress, and being accused of a crime she never committed, Ashley recalled the moment she kissed a stranger. Madame Z said her luck was stolen, because the guy needed it more than her. Ashley asked how she will recover the luck back. The fortune teller replied to her, but it was unclear. The next day, Ashley printed out the faces of the 20 professional dancers at the masquerade bash, hoping to get her luck back. Maggie and Dana find her idea crazy but help her anyway. They happen to pass by a church, where newlywed couples were congratulated at the front door. Dana recognized the groom as the guy in the picture. Ashley didn't waste a second and kissed the guy. She lined up with the people, congratulated the groom, and pretended she was a close friend. Michael didn't recognize her, and was surprised to be kissed by a stranger. Dana and Maggie stopped their friend, but it was too late. The bride saw everything, and hit her husband for ruining the wedding. Ashley's journey to find the mystery guy continues, as she roams around the city. She also bought a scratch-off lottery game ticket, and after kissing a guy, she tests her luck by scratching the ticket. From kissing a street performer, Ashley went too far and interrupted a rehearsal. She kissed two guys there, leaving the people around confused. Not only that, but she also kissed a patient, went to the sauna and the park. After kissing the last guy, Ashley was hopeful her luck was back. Maggie handed the lottery ticket, but Ashley failed to win. Her motivation was restored after learning it was only the 19th guy, and she hadn't kissed the last man, Tom Guthrie. They had already looked for him at three different addresses, but he seemed nowhere to be found. The girls returned to the apartment, where David left a voice message. He invited her to visit a gallery at 7 p.m., and highly anticipated her presence. Maggie and Dana teased her, but Ashley said she had no plans to attend. After losing her luck, she is afraid to mess up in front of David, and humiliate herself in the end. Suddenly, Maggie's black cat crossed Ashley's path. Ashley was rattled because the pet may bring bad luck to her, like last night. The girls laughed at her for being superstitious. Maggie was against her staying at the apartment, afraid to encounter misfortune. She invited her to go out and meet David, or she will remain single forever. Ashley agrees with her point, so she gets up and starts to think of life positively. She realized that maybe bad luck keeps following her, because she focuses on the negative side of things. Soon after she swore to think positively, her contact lens fell. Ashley picked it up and wore it again since it was her last one. Dana and Maggie were disgusted by what she did. Suddenly, Ashley screamed because her eye hurt. At the gallery, Ashley was not permitted to go inside, because she looked like she was attending a Halloween party with the eye patch. The lady insisted David invited her as his plus one. Fortunately, David happened to go to the entrance and saw her. He instructed the receptionist to let her in. Ashley got so excited and bumped into the glass wall, thinking it was the door. She feels embarrassed because David saw everything. Ashley pretended she was not hurt and greeted the man like nothing had happened. David brought her to the famous mud artwork displayed. Having no taste in art, Ashley made fun of the creation, because it looked like poop. Little did she know, David's mom made the piece, and she was standing behind her. David tried to stop her from commenting, but she didn't listen. Ashley was surprised to see Mrs. Pennington. She admired her beauty, afraid to be nagged after making fun of her artwork. Mrs. Pennington was not flattered and avoided talking to her by sipping on her drink. The waiter looked familiar, so Ashley confirmed it by looking at the photo. 
Then she realized it was Tom, the last dancer she was looking for. Ashley followed the man and pushed him to the platform. The man tried to stop her from kissing because he was part of a show. Ashley never listened and continued kissing him. Outside, the show had already started, where servers removed their uniform and played as mud people, like Mrs. Pennington's work. Lights are turned on at Tom's spot because he is the mud king. Everyone was confused about why a lady was on top of him. Out of embarrassment, Ashley punched the man's chest and pretended she was saving him from a heart attack. She performed CPR and mouth to mouth to kiss him. David wondered why the kiss was too long, but let it pass. When Tom got up, the guests applauded Ashley for her heroism. Mrs. Pennington treated her well after the incident. Suddenly, Ashley stumbled to the mud artwork, ruining the piece. Ashley spent another night at the NYPD after damaging a precious artwork. While doing a mugshot, the lady complained to the officers for arresting her, when it was only mud. Inside the cell, Ashley met the abusive prisoner again, and received another punch from her. The next day, Ashley was released from prison. While walking, she passed by a diner, making her hungry. Ashley ordered food but realized she had no money. When the waiter came, she requested water to at least have something in her stomach. The short-tempered man got mad and nagged at her. He told the lady they don't give water to people who don't order. After being rejected, Ashley tried again to request something. This time, she wanted to use the comfort room. The waiter got even more mad, creating a scene. Everyone at the diner stared at them. Jake, who was also having breakfast, pitied the lady. Before leaving the place, Ashley ate someone's bacon. She also threw salt around the area, but it all landed in the waiter's eyes. It was so painful that the waiter leaned on the table and fell after. Ashley apologized, but the people around were glaring at her. Jake could relate because he also experienced several misfortunes back then, so he helped her escape. Ashley thanked him for saving her. She shared losing her job, money, and a place to stay. Jake gave her the food he kept from the diner. Ashley was delighted and excused herself to eat the meal alone. The lady was eating peacefully when Jake approached her. He was offering a job, and Ashley thought it was a scam. Jake insisted because he knew the feeling of being unlucky and jobless. Ashley denied she was having bad luck and acted cool. However, Jake told her she was sitting on a newly painted bench. The man introduced himself and offered her his previous job at the bowling alley. Ashley was reluctant because her dress was muddy, also with paint marks. The man calmed her down and said she looked just fine. Ashley doesn't know what she did to meet a kind man like him. At the Rock and Bowl, Ashley overheard the owner, Mark, saying he was not interested in hiring a loser waitress. At that moment, she loses hope of landing a job again. Jake came to her with good news. She was offered to be a janitor, but Jake hopes for her to be a waitress instead. Ashley didn't care what job it was and accepted the offer. Ashley thought everything would go smoothly after landing a job. But bad luck seemed to follow her. On her first day, she was tasked to mop the floor. The problem is she doesn't know how to use the machine. Plus, she also was wearing heels. Ashley fell on the floor, trying to stop the spinning mop. Afterward, she headed to the men's toilet but went out immediately because it was stinky. Ashley got curious about the bowling pins, so she tried to pull one and ended up in the ball pit. By the end of the shift, she wiped the ball and placed it on a stand. Unfortunately, it collapsed, and the ball rolled, almost hitting her bus. Day by day, Ashley learns how to do her job smoothly. At the men's toilet, she would wear a respirator not to smell the awful odor. Apart from that, Ashley also learned how to use the mop. Later that day, Jake and the McFly visited the bar, and Mark was so proud of them. Their songs were around the radio stations, so he decided to treat them with burgers and fries for a celebration. Mark got so busy accommodating the boys that he instructed Ashley to climb on the ladder and fix the light. The lady refused, imagining she would create a mess again. Jake saw her changing the fluorescent lights. It was his previous job, so he knew the lady was not doing well. Ashley accidentally dropped a bulb, and it broke in front of the boss. She also installed lights without turning them off and was electrocuted after. Jake came to the rescue and dashed to catch her. The man brought the injured lady to his apartment. He treated Ashley's burned fingers with a cold bottle and toothpaste. Putting toothpaste on burnt skin is a Chinese remedy he learned. Everything Jake used to the lady's wound came from his emergency bag. The bag got all he needed, especially when he was still unlucky, meeting different accidents on the way. Now that Jake feels lucky, he wants to pass down the bag to Ashley, so she can also use it. Jake has a good sense of humor, and the lady couldn't stop laughing at him. His phone rang, and he excused himself to answer it. Ashley heard he was talking to a girl named Katie. She felt jealous because she hoped Jake was still single. She bid goodbye not to disturb the couple. The next day, McFly was practicing when Mr. Phillips came. He congratulated the boys because their album made a hit on different radio stations. Because of that, he plans to book them an event at the Hard Rock Cafe in Times Square. It is a big event, and Mr. Phillips is looking forward to hearing a new song from them. The band ordered snacks, and Ashley delivered them. The boys teased Jake to the girl, but the man clarified nothing was happening between them. Ashley placed the food in the studio, and Jake came seconds after. Her unlucky hands almost destroyed things in the room. Good thing Jake was there to help her. 
The man invited Ashley to stay longer to hear their songs. Jake invited her out for coffee, which made Ashley smile. However, the lady got jealous of Tiffany, thinking she was Katie and Jake's girlfriend. She had no idea Jake was talking about the little girl beside Tiffany, whose name was Katie. Ashley decided to return to the bowling alley, because Mac might wonder where she was. Jake confirmed if she is free that night for the coffee. The lady declined after accidentally hitting the man carrying files. Later that night, Jake dropped Katie off at home because it was raining. He also saw Ashley heading home from work. The strong wind blew her umbrella hard, damaging it after. Ashley had no choice but to walk under the rain. Jake requested his driver to stop by her. Ashley was surprised to see Jake in the middle of having a bad day. Jake offered her to get inside the car and send her home. The lady was reluctant, so he insisted she should go with him, and promised to serve her hot chocolate with marshmallows. Ashley was cold, so she accepted the offer. Ashley changed her clothes. She was amazed that the man owned a laundry area, so she washed her clothes after. Ashley looked at Jake, and accidentally poured too much powder on the machine. She returned the box as if nothing had happened. Ashley included Jake's clothes upon his request. His phone rang, so he went away to answer it. Ashley turned on the washing machine but got pissed off, because it was complicated to run it. She was relieved after it started spinning. Suddenly, bubbles were coming out of the machine. She tried to remove them, but it was getting worse. More bubbles came out, making Ashley rattle. She looked for the turn off button, but she hit the turbo spin. Jake heard the banging sound, so he asked if the lady was fine. Ashley closes the door, she assured Jake everything was fine and she can manage it. The washing machine was spinning faster than ever. Ashley has no idea how to stop it, so she hits it repeatedly. What she did only worsen the problem, and the laundry area had a sea of bubbles. Jake doubted she was fine, so he opened the door. He freaked out, seeing a massive layers of bubbles, and immediately turned off the washing machine. The two only laughed it out, especially after Ashley said she was a complete disaster, and gave up fighting against it. Ashley accepts her fate as someone encountering a series of misfortune. Jake burst into laughter because he could relate. The two played bubbles after and leaned on each other. Their romantic moment was interrupted by Katie. It was only then that Ashley knew Katie was a little girl and not Jake's girlfriend. The girls enjoyed the hot chocolate because they both liked having it with marshmallows. Ashley overheard Jake was having a problem. The man said Philip wanted the new song ready before the concert. However, the band never started writing yet. Ashley remembered her singer friend Maggie and offered to help him. The next day, Maggie performed her song I've Got You in front of Jake and the band. It was great, and they asked permission to use it at the concert. The McFly enhanced it through Jake's suggestion, and added a touch of rock. The new version was better, and Jake thanked Ashley for helping him. Maggie, on the other hand, was proud to hear the song she wrote. Mr. Phillips came and danced to the lively beat of the song. He came to congratulate Jake, because their upcoming hard rock concert was sold out already. Mr. Phillips thanked the man for saving him twice at the masquerade ball and now for the sold out tickets. Jake couldn't express how grateful he was for the opportunity. He was indeed lucky after the party. Ashley heard everything. It was then that she realized that Jake was the man she had kissed. Her luck was transferred to him, and it all makes sense because he shared recently how he used to encounter bad luck. Dana can't wait to see her friend kissing Jake because they look great together. In the control room, Ashley kissed Jake. The man liked it, but the lady refused to be kissed again. She went out, leaving Jake floating in the clouds. After the kiss, Jake fell from his chair, implying he returned to being unlucky. Ashley headed outside of the building and called a taxi. Cabs immediately stopped by before her, like how they used to when she was lucky. To double check that she was fortunate, she scratched the lottery ticket, and she won. Ashley was so happy that everything in her life was slowly falling into place. Surprisingly, she also runs into her ex-boss, Peggy. The woman was with Antonio, and she apologized for her hurtful words. She was also happy to announce that she and Antonio were getting married soon, and it won't be possible if she didn't set them on a blind date. Ashley was delighted to hear it, and congratulated the two. Peggy was not done yet and offered Ashley to work with her again as a vice president. She considers the lady her lucky charm, and she won't lose her again this time. Ashley was surprised and immediately accepted the offer. Ashley returned to the apartment with the clothes she dreamed of buying last time. She also bought food for the girls to celebrate getting back her luck. Ashley found the two all dressed for the concert. However, they looked lonely, so she asked them the problem. Ashley learned that the band wouldn't perform Maggie's song because Philip was superstitious. For him, it's not good to perform a song they didn't write. Ashley felt bad for Maggie and the band. If only she had not kissed Jake, maybe the band would have sung her best friend's song. Despite that, Maggie was not mad at her. She even congratulated Ashley after she announced Peggy rehired her for the company. Dana and Maggie bid goodbye because they were late for the concert. Ashley asked Maggie again if she was fine about her song. Maggie replied it's alright because dwelling on bad things will only make her life miserable. She also wishes her the best for the company meeting with Peggy. After the girls left, Ashley looked at herself in the mirror and realized something. Meanwhile, the McFly was overwhelmed by seeing the jam-packed concert venue. 
Jake called them for final touches at the dressing room. Everything was going well, until the band's drummer, Harry, accidentally dropped his stick. He went downstairs to get it. Soon after he found the stick, Jake closed the door, not realizing Harry was inside. Ashley decided to attend the concert and appeared at the conference with Peggy. She was right on time because Maggie and Dana had difficulties finding a cab. The girls got excited to see Ashley going to the concert with them. Two minutes before the performance, the band's guitarist broke a string and hit his eye. Jake calmed them down, but the boys vomited instead. It was also at that moment that they discovered Harry was missing. Everyone scattered to find him quickly. Two minutes have gone by, and the band is supposed to perform already. The crowd got mad because they kept them waiting. Mr. Phillips was also alarmed that the band was late. Jake did not reveal Harry is missing because he will freak out. However, the vocalist went running and informed him Harry was nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Harry got tired of screaming for help, so he roamed around the room to figure out how to escape. The girls finally arrived at the venue, and they headed to the back door to avoid the massive crowd. Inside, Mr. Phillips was furious and forced them to perform even without Harry. Someone volunteered to be a drummer, but Jake was reluctant to be on stage, with one of his boys missing. Ashley ran to Jake and kissed him. Mr. Phillips got irritated because Jake was wasting time. Soon after the kiss, Harry made out from the ground floor and stood on a platform that brought him to the stage. The crowd cheered, seeing a member of McFly appearing. The drummer started performing, signaling his bandmates to pursue the concert. Ashley requested Jake to play Maggie's song, and they agreed, even if Phillips would surely be mad. Maggie was pleased to hear her song. In the same manner, the audience was also thrilled since it was their first time performing I've Got You. Jake got nervous when Philip approached him. He looked angry but congratulated the man for pushing the song, because the crowd seems to love it. After the entrance song loved by the audience, the band performed another song titled I'll Be OK. The concert ended, and the band celebrated the successful event. They opened a wine, and the cork landed on the unlucky Ashley. The lady was happy for Jake. He used luck for a good cause, and he deserves it. Maggie noticed Ashley was lonely. Ashley confessed she was falling for Jake but couldn't be with him because they could not kiss. She plans to give him luck for good out of her love for him. Maggie motivated her to confess because there is nothing wrong with being together with Jake. But, the lady made up her mind. She plans to go to Grand Central to meet her parents and unwind. Maggie had no choice but to support her. Ashley arrived at the station, where the trains got delayed when she came. She heard a familiar voice, and it was Jake. Maggie told him about the luck, and that was the reason Ashley was running away. Jake wants to kiss the lady to return the luck, but she refuses. Ashley went emotional hearing that he would still be happy to be unlucky if that means being with her. For Jake, getting bruises along the way will all pay off if Ashley is in his life. The two kissed, and luck kept transferring between them. Katie arrived, and the couple kissed her cheeks. The luck was transferred to her, so Ashley handed the lottery ticket. Katie jumped because she hit the jackpot, and she couldn't wait to show it to her grandma. The unlucky couple, Jake and Ashley, held each other's hands, wondering how will they adjust to life without luck. Surprisingly, they found a coin, and thought someone from them was still lucky. A construction worker broke a pipe, and got them drenched in the end. 